Hey guys, this is RK from ETU Labs and welcome to the first tutorials on database management programming. Now a database, as you all would have guessed, is a collection of information or related data captured in the form of a table. And database management system is a software or a collection of programs that enables you to create and maintain a database. Some of the examples could be Oracle and MySQL. MySQL is a free open source which you can download it free of cost. Now before starting off, I'd like to give you some of the basic informations and constraints that is required to construct any database. Now let us take this typical example. This example asks us to construct a student database. Now all those things that you uh, that's present outside the brackets are called as entities. Now an entity is any real world object that has an independent existence. In other words, these are going to be the table names and all those things that are present inside the brackets are called as an attribute of an entity that is they give property to this particular entity for example if I construct a table name student I can insert a student record into this particular table by uh, providing the value of the st uh, student number st student name his major the level and his age similarly if I construct another table named faculty I can insert a faculty record every faculty is going to have a faculty ID he has a name and he belongs to some particular department which is identified by this department ID now before you construct your database and start filling in with data first you need to design the layout and this design is called as a schema now this design is something like a blueprint of your house just like you construct your blueprint before constructing your house this schema has to be designed before you start constructing your database now this is how a typical schema looks like I have constructed it using MS Paint now all these things are your tables and the first row indicates the column names or your attributes now the second row is something called as domains now what are these domains the domain actually indicates the type of value what these attributes can ha take for example your snum can take the values of only integers similarly s name can take the values of only string similarly here course name can take the values of only string and so on now you see that some of the attributes are colored here and also underlined why is that so that is because these attributes are considered to be primary keys now what are these primary keys whenever you insert data into your database every record has to be unique from one another right for example let us consider the situation I have constructed a faculty table and this is just an abstract construction and this is how the faculty table looks like let us consider that there are two faculty named Andrew and unfortunately they belong to the same department computer science and computer science now how will you differentiate this Andrew from this one here it is only by using this faculty ID because every identification number should always be unique and that is why this faculty ID is made the primary key here note that every table should contain at least one primary key and no two primary keys can be the same and none of the primary keys can take null values the second most important thing is the order in which you create these tables for example if you go back to our question here the order in which they are specified is student, class, enrolled and faculty. Let us say you proceed in this order. You have constructed a student database. Now next you proceed to construct the class database or the class table. You are going to insert the values to course name. You are going to give value to meet set which is probably a schedule and the room number probably where they are going to meet and this FID is nothing but your faculty ID indicating which faculty is going to handle this particular course but since you have not constructed any faculty or inserted any data into this faculty table you don't know what values this FID should take and this is where it's very much important to identify the interrelationships between different tables now this FID here is going to refer to this FID in the faculty table in other words 
all the values of this FID should be present in this faculty ID. And there's also some of the constraints, which is to be noted. We call this particular attribute as a foreign key. This is because it is coming from some other table, which is a primary key. Your FID is a primary key of faculty ID and this is a foreign key that is coming from this primary key. And note that every foreign key has to be a primary key of some other table. And also the domain name of this foreign key has to be the same as that of the faculty ID here. Since the main faculty ID is taking only integers, you can insert only integer values into this particular faculty ID. Similarly, here a student has enrolled for some particular course and, some per and he has a student ID. And this is where the interrelationship comes from. This student number is taken from the student's database, student table, and it is a primary key and it has the same domain. Now any value that you're going to insert in this particular table should be present in this student table. And the course name is coming from the class table. And this course name has to be present in this particular class table. And since one student can be taking more than one particular course name, I have made both of them the primary key since it ensures uniqueness. Uh, don't worry if you haven't understood the concepts of foreign keys yet. When we go to the construction of the tables using MySQL, probably you'll get a clear picture. Now, in order to use MySQL, I prefer go go to mysql.com downloads and uh, download any one of the import any one of the any one of these for Mac or Windows. And uh, I already have mine ready here. And probably in the next tutorials, I'll be teaching you how to insert and create database by using this software. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.